Hey guys, today I'm going to show you my normal routine for finding shiny unknowns, uh, shiny alphas, and hopefully shiny space-time distortion Pokemon. So, let's jump right into it. Uh, you can start out in any map if you want to follow this method, but honestly, you're going to have more luck in the Mirelands, especially if you're wanting to find shiny unknowns because they only spawn here. But this just gives you a few more things to look at in between uh, space-time distortions. So let's hop on into the Mirelands. So a couple things you should know about space-time distortions is you cannot rest. It resets the timer for the space-time distortions. And they're actually a timed event, so every five minutes the game is checking if a space-time distortion is going to spawn. and each one of those checks, your chances increase until they're maxed out at 45 minutes when you will guaranteed get one. But the problem is, is if there's a weather condition or something, it can actually cancel the proc of the space-time distortion spawning. So there's a lot of waiting around while you're trying to get these space-time distortions. So, when I'm here trying to get my shiny Porygon from the space-time distortions, my normal routine is I go in here, I check these unknown, four to six of them spawn after you've already completed uh, the page for the unknowns. So you'll have four to six in here, and luckily you have uh, perfected decks for these if they're, spawn in, if they're spawning in here. And uh, you also, if you have a shiny charm, you have some really good odds to find a shiny in here. So um, if you don't have a shiny, these will stick around in here, these spawned ones. They'll stay around until you actually clear them out. So what I do is I usually just bonk a couple of them with an Oran Berry and I chase the rest of them away. You can catch them, you can do all that if you want them, but I don't want to waste any actual Pokeballs on these. So I just chase them away. That one's getting a little snack apparently. You chase them all away. And then once they despawn, you will get a new set of unknowns uh, after a, a bit of time. And I'll show you guys that in a minute here. But as you see, we don't have any unknowns in here. So what do we do while we're waiting for the space-time distortion now? Well, you can go and you can check all of the alphas that you're interested in here in uh, the map. And these Pokemon, you know, there's a handful of them on each map, so you could do this on any other map. but um, I go by each of these alpha spawns, one by one, hoping to find a shiny. But if you don't have a shiny, the thing is, these alphas, even during day-night cycles where they get replaced, or uh, they go away and they come back, they don't actually change unless you defeat them. So it's the same way as uh, the unknowns. You have to actually battle or chase these things away. Since they're alphas, they're not just going to run away, though. So... We have to beat up on all these Pokemon that aren't shiny. And after a day-night cycle passes, these things will respawn and they have chances to be shiny again. So, you go through the map and we'll kind of fast forward now. And one thing that's good to note here is when you're just flying around the map to all of these alpha Pokemon, you're still checking for shinies just for all of the normal spawns throughout the map. They're, they all have Pokemon generated, and uh, you have a good chance of finding a shiny if you have a shiny charm as well, so you're kind of doing a lot of shiny checks uh, when you're doing this method. Now, I should note that the Pokemon that swap out between day and night each have their own shiny chances, but Pokemon that don't get replaced by anything else, so like the uh, Ralts and stuff that are here, if they aren't getting replaced by a Ghastly, wow, look at that, uh, <laughs> Alpha Spiritomb, if like that Curlia right there doesn't get replaced at night. So that actually isn't changing every time you check, every day and night. So if you want a certain Pokemon, you have to catch them or defeat them to get them to actually respawn and have another shiny chance. So just make sure that you're doing that if you want a specific Pokemon Shiny. You'll get some extra chances at it that way. Okay. 
And if you want to be really efficient with this, uh, you can KO every single alpha Pokemon, but to be honest, usually I just make a pass and I just KO the ones that I'm interested in getting. So, um, if you don't KO them, you aren't going to continue getting shiny odds for them, so maybe KOing every single one is the best way for you. But, uh, you know, it gets a little tedious and some of these fights can take more than one hit, so um, sometimes I'll just end up KOing a handful of them and going back to the Unknown Cave, because at this point, uh, I'm expecting the Unknowns to already be respawned in there. Alright, now that I'm done clearing out the Alphas that I'm interested in, uh, we should have some more unknowns spawned in the cave over here. So we just go back and we'll clear them out. And realistically, that's kind of all we're doing. We rinse and repeat. We just keep doing this until we get a space-time distortion. And uh, this is just kind of what you do in between the space-time distortion. So I'll cut right now to uh, a space-time distortion and we can talk a little bit about those. One little tidbit while we're waiting for a uh, space-time distortion is if you want to do the extra lazy method of this farming <laughs> and like watch a video or something while you're doing this, um, a really easy way to do this is just to clear out the unknowns and then stand here in the doorway. You'll see them respawn and it's every five minutes or something like that that they respawn here. So you just need to make sure you're clearing out the unknowns when they pop up and then uh, occasionally taking a look at your map, seeing if a space-time distortion is on here because it doesn't really make a noise when it generates. It does a little pop-up on the screen, but if you're looking at a video, um, it's kind of easy to miss. So just occasionally check your map, uh, check the unknowns and clear them out, and then just kind of wait around here. That's the, the super lazy method of this. All right, so we have a space-time distortion finally forming here. So one little thing to point out with the space-time distortions is you have the symbol on the map here, and you have the little bubble that shows where it's spawning. But if you look at around this uh, kind of like black hole looking icon here, there's actually another little timer. We'll give it a little bit of time here. We'll fast forward for a minute while we run over there. All right, so we're here in the space-time distortion now. So what I was talking about earlier was, if you look inside of the bubble for the space-time distortion around this black hole icon, there's a little, kind of at the top right here where my cursor is, there's a little gauge that's building up. It makes a full circle around this black hole icon, and that actually shows you when the space-time distortion is going to begin. So we'll fast forward a little bit and I'll show you this again when we're close to starting. Alright, a little more time has passed and you can see this circle around this black hole just keeps gradually moving. I think it takes, uh, you know, around three to five minutes for this to actually start up. But it's a real slow build-up, and once it's finally there, it'll start up again. So I'll show you once we're actually there. And just another thing to note, the reason that I'm telling you guys about this timer that you have for the space-time distortion starting is if you're not within this bubble by the time that the actual distortion starts, uh, in my experience, you actually don't get the three rare spawn Pokemon that only spawn during uh, space-time distortion events. So, if you're not over here by that time, you actually won't get them, and you're kind of missing out on the main reason that you'd be uh, farming these space-time distortions. So, always make sure to look at your map, 
make sure that you're going to have enough time. Look at we're about a little more than halfway there to getting the uh, space time distortion now. So just make sure you're always in this bubble before it actually begins. Alright, we can hear the space-time distortion is starting right now. You get like a big rumbling right before it happens and right before it ends. So, a nice thing about these space-time distortions is not only are you farming a bunch of shinies and stuff, but you're also just getting a ton of items and money and everything. These uh, blue, red, and green shards that you get, as well as the uh, stardust, you can get a, a combination recipe uh, to sell them for more. So I believe it's uh, star pieces that you combine with the uh, shards and the uh, stardust. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here. And uh, you can get that later on in the game. So you can actually get a lot of money out of doing these too and just running around and getting all of the items. You see I'm just kind of ignoring most of the Pokemon. So there are three rare spawns that always happen in here that are the special Pokemon like Porygon and Magnemite, and there's one right now. Um, you get three of them. So we have a couple of the starters. It looks like we got a Cyndaquil, a Quilava, and a Porygon this time. None of them are shiny, unfortunately, so um, we're kind of out of luck for this one. And that's all we're going to get for those specific Pokemon. But uh, these Pokemon here, there's like a, every. Uh, short while, two to three Pokemon spawn, uh, and it's different for each map that you're in, but uh, usually a lot of Eevees and Eeveelutions and then some other things. And they all have a chance to be shiny as well when they spawn. So after I look at the first uh, three of those rare spawns, I just kind of fly around and uh, just look at what these other Pokemon are going to be, because you can get shiny Eevees, other shiny Eeveelutions. You know, some of these other things are pretty common Pokemon, so I don't really care if I get a shiny of them, but specifically, I'm kind of hunting uh, the shiny Eevees as well, so it's good for me to just hang around for the whole uh, space-time distortion. And you can see how much longer you have left here in your map. That same circle we were talking about, look at it, it's counting down now. It's spinning... Uh, going through again, but it's removing the circle this time, so you see we're a little... we've got basically a third of the time left in this space-time distortion. So, uh, you can kind of monitor how much longer you have in the distortion that way. But, a lot of it's just kind of flying around. They spawn and despawn so fast, I think it's like every 10 or 15 seconds that the new sets of Pokemon spawn, so you have a lot of chances to get something like a shiny Eevee if you have a perfected dex and like I do and stuff like that so you'll just fly around here until you're done with it all right we can hear the sound it's gonna be wrapping up pretty soon we also know from the timer that it's going away in just a second too so uh, one thing to note, if you do find a shiny in here, they despawn very quickly because the Pokemon cycle so quick. Uh, so you need to make sure that if you really want to catch a shiny or a Pokemon that spawned in that space-time distortion, that you battle it. Um, otherwise, it, it will despawn and you can lose shinies that way very easily. Uh, another thing to note is the saving method does not work. Uh, in space-time distortion, so you can't save and then reset to uh, get a shiny again. It'll actually end your space-time distortion immediately when you quit the game during one, even if you saved in the middle of it. So make sure you're not trying to do that because you will definitely lose some Pokemon that way. So now that we're done with the distortion, we just kind of rinse and repeat. We're going to go back to the Unknown Cave and... Uh, we just keep doing our cycle with the uh, alphas and eventually you'll find something and you can decide if you want to keep going or if you want to wait around for more space-time distortions, but uh, this is a way that I've gotten quite a few 
uh, shiny unknowns, and hopefully I'll get my shiny Porygon sometime soon. So, space-time distortions are definitely the biggest grind as far as the shiny Pokemon go. So, I think this is probably the most efficient way to farm those as well as other shinies. So, uh, if this helped you guys out, let me know. Um, if there's anything that I missed, uh, just leave me a comment down below and I'd be happy to update the guide and <laughs> put any other tips together. So, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on one of my live streams, hopefully.